Well, love them or hate them, the calorie count seen on many restaurant menus across the country will soon be going national thanks to a federal law, one of the latest weapons in the war on obesity. They're there to help Americans pick healthy choices while dining out. But does all that menu math really add up, or could you be packing in more calories than you bargained for? ABC's Jim Avila has the straight skinny. They are supposed to help America's obesity problem. Calorie counts boldly displayed on restaurant menus. That's kind of important to have that visibility into what you're eating. Two states and nine counties require them today, and by the middle of this year, a federal law is expected to force chain restaurants, convenience stores, and vending machines nationwide to post calorie counts. It's all part of the government's effort to help tighten waistlines and stop the obesity epidemic. How many calories you need every day varies depending on size, age, and physical activity. But the USDA general recommendations for women are between 1,600 and 2,400 calories per day, and 2,000 to 3,000 calories a day for men. But how accurate are those calorie counts on the menu? A study by Tufts University sampling food from 42 restaurants says it depends. Fast food joints are most accurate because of the uniform recipes and portions. But there are sometimes wide variations found in sit-down restaurants. We found that 20% uh, of the foods we tested had 100 calories or more over what was stated on the menu. Um, and we would consider that to be a considerable amount. I know that that may not sound like a lot, but if uh, someone were to consume 100 calories extra per day for a year, they could gain up to 10 pounds, so that could really be a problem. And most concerning is that a majority of the errors were made on the diet side of the menu. These are the foods that people who are trying to manage their weight would gravitate toward, and they may be getting more calories than they expect. A just completed ABC News sampling found that more than half of the low-cal meals we tested today, my friends, had more calories than listed on the menu. We gathered food under the direction of a nationally known lab, sent producers to three cities where major chains list their calorie counts on the menu. We collected the food as directed, never touching it with our hands, froze it, and sent it to the lab in Florida for analysis. Samples were taken under chain of custody. 24 food samples from four sit-down restaurants and one McDonald's. When they arrived at the laboratory, they were frozen on dry ice. The food was stored in a lab refrigerator until each could be tested for its calorie count. Then the food chemists put each meal into a big blender. Basically taking on the entire contents into one homogeneous blend. Now you can see the difference from where we started. It's just one smooth paste. All the ingredients are blended together. The results were surprising. McDonald's did the best. Both the Big Mac meal and the premium chicken sandwich tested 30 calories below the menu count. But the sit-down restaurants had results sometimes wildly different than advertised. In all, only one calorie count was accurate, a skinny-licious chicken salad sandwich from Cheesecake Factory. Eleven meals had more calories than on the menu, and ten had fewer calories. The biggest surprise, perhaps, involved Chili's original ribs. They tested way under the menu promise all three times we bought them by over 600 calories. Other meals were over by only a few. In the over category, this entree had the biggest variance. Cheesecake Factory's fish and chips dinner was over by a full 420 calories. That's like drinking three cans of sugary soda on top of your meal. Olive Garden's low-calorie seafood burdetto was over its calorie count by 120. And one sample of the Chili's lighter choice margarita grilled chicken tested at 120 calories more than advertised. Fast food restaurants tended to be more accurate than the sit-down foods. The fast food industry tends to have a more formulaic preparation method. It's just a matter of warming it up and serving it to the consumer. Whereas at a sit-down restaurant, things are being prepared on the spot. Um, if, if by chance some extra butter gets into the pan, that can really uh, make a big difference. All the restaurants and their trade association say that most calorie counts are as accurate as possible and test extensively to make sure. But they concede there are variations, mostly due to portion size and individual restaurant preparation. And the menus worn actual calories may vary. What can you do? 
take control of what is put on top of the entree. Ask for everything fattening on the side. Other high calorie additions such as cheeses or sauces, again, just try to order those so that you have a little more control over the portioning. Important information soon to be on every menu because Americans now eat one third of their meals outside the home. For Nightline, I'm Jim Avila in Washington.